All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for making time in your schedule this morning to join us. Um, we have our rescheduled uh, presentation this morning with Denver Preston uh, from KTEC Specialty Coatings. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we had the Comcast outage kind of across the whole area. So glad Denver could, could reschedule and come back and join us. So this is our last of our uh, winter technical briefs uh, for the season. And just wanted to remind everybody that if you go back to saltsmart.org where you registered for the workshop, go to the workshop pages uh, or workshop page, and you'll be able to find links to the recordings of all the webinars. And we'll get the recording for this one up uh, probably within a day or two. And uh, also there are a number of outreach materials. Uh, we have materials from years past. So we have a number of new materials on there. Um, if you go to the info tab, um, and then there's an outreach uh, section, or outreach page that you can get to. Um, and please, uh, please use the materials if there's questions about how to use them or um, you know, if there's some other ideas you have, please reach out to us. We have uh, posters, social media pieces, blog articles that you can link to. Uh, we put all the stuff up on our Facebook page. Uh, so, you know, that was, um, those materials are out there. And then if you do use them, remember to put them on your MS4 report because these outreach materials um, are a way to meet some of those requirements for education outreach. And I'm gonna just throw my last slide up. I think everybody, uh, you can either reach out to me with questions. Um, I know people have uh, reached out to Nancy when you registered with uh, questions. Uh, our contact information is also up on the SaltSmart website. Uh, so please don't, don't be a stranger for me to reach out. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Denver and let him introduce himself. Stop sharing my screen. Good morning, Denver. Good morning, Jennifer. Let's see here, let me get my share button. All righty, there we go. Yeah, we're good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jennifer, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Denver Preston. I'm with uh, KTEC Specialty Coatings in uh, Ashley, Indiana. And uh, I've uh, actually been doing this now for 12 years. Uh, it, <laughs> I can't hardly believe it, but uh, we've uh, been in the business uh, for 12 years now and uh, been uh, soliciting uh, customers in the Chicago area for over 10 years now. And I'm happy to say that we have about 50 agencies now that are uh, using our product in the Chicago land area. And so I'm very grateful to those uh, um, customers that have been using our product. And uh, yeah, what a pleasure to uh, be asked to, uh, you know, give a, a discussion here today, a presentation on uh, reducing chloride emissions. Um, before I get into my presentation, what I'd like to do is uh, ask uh, that you ask questions. Um, you know, as I've been doing these presentations for so long now, it's uh, come to my attention that, you know, the, the more questions that are asked, uh, the more we all learn uh, about the subject. So I'm a big advocate of, you know, having uh, uh, attendees ask questions. Uh, maybe the easiest way to do that is just text me and then I'll uh, monitor my phone here. And um, especially at the end of the presentation, we'll take a look at the questions. So um, there's my number, my text number. Also notice down in the uh, lower right hand corner, we uh, number our slides. So if there's a particular slide uh, that is uh, prompting a question from you, uh, jot that slide down and we might be able to go back and uh, take a look at that uh, particular slide when I'm answering your question. Okay, so why are we talking about reducing chloride emissions? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, we have a problem. Uh, particularly here in the Chicago land area. So uh, several years ago, uh, my question was, all right, well, you know, how much rock salt are we really using in the Chicago land area? And I spent quite a bit of time uh, looking up um, uh, salt contracts. And so I looked at virtually every agency 
uh, in uh, the six county area, Lake, Cook, DuPage, Will, McHenry, and Kane. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I discovered that those uh, agencies in those six counties are bringing into the Chicagoland area about 1.1 million tons of rock salt uh, every year. And so that 1.1 million tons does not even include um, all of the winter maintenance contractors. Uh, and, you know, in the Chicagoland area, there's over 100 uh, SIMA members. Um, and then uh, one of those members uh, I heard through the grapevine uses about 75,000 tons uh, per season. Uh, then we have O'Hare International Airport that um, I checked it out. Uh, looks like they use about 30,000 tons a year. And then how many tons are being, uh, you know, uh, d dispensed into the uh, local environment by 3 million households? Um, I'm not sure that 1.1 million even comes close uh, to uh, what the actual amount of uh, salt that's being, you know, uh, put in our local environment here. Now, one question, uh, you know, what does 1.1 million tons of rock salt look like? I mean, many people, uh, you know, in decision making uh, positions uh, aren't even sure what one ton of rock salt looks like, let alone 1.1 million tons. So if we took that 1.1 million tons and uh, uh, calculated out how many semi-trailer loads that would be, it'd be 44,000 uh, semi-tractor trailer loads of rock salt. And if you took all of those 44,000 semis and you lined them up nose to tail, the line of salt trucks would be 542 miles long uh, or from Chicago to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, to, it would take nine hours and 42 minutes to drive that distance. And just imagine you know, if uh, on the berm of the highway, there was salt trucks lined up. I mean, 1.1 million tons of rock salt is a massive number. Um, and, and as soon as I realized this, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, we do have to uh, be, uh, you know, careful about, you know, what we're doing to the local environment here. So uh, I give uh, kudos to all of these uh, work groups that have been trying to get the word out about uh, chloride emissions and what it's doing to our environment, what it has the capability of doing to our environment. And so when I attend these workshops, um, they are very, very good. Uh, they're full of information, um, you know, about how to reduce chloride emissions. And I agree with all of these things that uh, these work groups have uh, touched on, you know, education, absolutely uh, implement best management practice, uh, calibrate equipment annually, consider uh, efficiency when buying new equipment. All of this, uh, I completely agree with. Um, the ones that are highlighted in red um, are of special interest to me because of, you know, what I do for a living here, but uh, implement the use of brine Absolutely, uh, uh, we're big fans of brine um, and uh, pre-wet all rock salt, absolutely uh, essential uh, implement an anti-icing program. Uh, there's quite a few agencies that are, uh, you know, have implemented anti-icing and if your agency hasn't, I would uh, highly suggest that you at least consider it. Um, and then uh, lastly, consider alternative de-icers. So what we're gonna look at today is uh, what I call the boost and reduced method. And this is uh, one area that uh, these work groups really haven't uh, talked about a lot about. Um, they've kind of mentioned it and, you know, uh, kind of allude to uh, the performance of your rock salt and so forth. But simple logic tells us that the better your rock salt or your brine perform, uh, the less of them you need to maintain the same level of service. So uh, it's simple mathematic. Uh, mathematical logic here. If salt B melts 20% more ice 
than salt A, uh, then salt B can melt the same amount of ice as salt A with 16.7% less salt. And so let's take a look at some testing that we've done uh, over the years. Uh, what you see right here is uh, what's called a, a, a ice melt capacity uh, test uh, results and they're for solids. So what we're talking about is rock salt and then treated rock salt as we uh, go through this list. And these ice melt capacity tests were done at 25 degrees Fahrenheit uh, right here. And um, so here's the performance of untreated rock salt. Now, secondly, here's the performance of brine treated rock salt. And as I said earlier, uh, we are big fans of brine, uh, mostly because it's a, a carrier to better uh, performing uh, liquids. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. But the one thing that I want you to see here is that um, brine treated rock salt uh, does not uh, melt a lot more ice than what untreated rock salt does. Uh, in the ice melt capacity testing that we've done, uh, you can see here at 25 degrees uh, that it, it didn't even melt 1% more ice than untreated rock salt. Now, uh, I would admit uh, gladly that by wetting your rock salt, you are reducing bounce and scatter loss. So you're retaining more of that de-icer in the target area by wetting it. And that is an absolute benefit. But when looking at untreated rock salt and brine treated rock salt, there's almost no difference uh, whatsoever in the performance of the two. And the reason that I put this graphic up is because uh, most of you have uh, probably attended uh, at least one snow conference uh, put on by the APWA uh, organization. And, uh, you know, when you go to the snow conference, it seems like that all you hear about is brine, 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 brine. Um, and that is sort of a, a pet peeve of mine because uh, we can do a whole lot better than just brine alone. Um, and if you're doing just brine alone, this is the truth right here. Uh, the performance of that brine treated rock salt is less than 1%, um, you know, a greater ice melt performance. So um, I sort of have to laugh at, you know, this when uh, you know, people are talking about the benefits of brine, but they don't go on to talk about other liquids or uh, what other liquids do to your brine if you mix them. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about uh, here in this presentation. Um, so here's an, uh, another product that's called calcium chloride with boost. And um, so if you were treating your rock salt with this product, you can see here that it has an 11.3% increase in ice melt capacity. And what's interesting about this uh, level of performance is that if you uh, transition to a more powerful de-icer, uh, yeah, they are more costly, but did you realize that if you uh, boost the performance of your rock salt, uh, just about 10, 11, 12% that you can back your application rate down uh, about 10%. And that 10% uh, uh, performance increase uh, or and uh, allowing you to reduce your application rate by that much, that uh, lower uh, um, you know, application rate is basically going to pay for the more expensive a liquid de-icer that you're applying to get this improved performance. So just a very small amount of performance increase will pay uh, for that liquid de-icer, uh, even if it's substantially more than brine. I mean, you can make brine for uh, most people today, say about 20 cents a gallon, uh, these uh, de-icers that we're going to look at are uh, much more than that, but yet the performance is so much greater uh, that you'll pay for that uh, greater uh, priced uh, uh, product uh, easily um, without any uh, uh, you know, problem whatsoever. Um, and then um, let's take a look at this next product right here. This is 
32% calcium chloride. Um, that's applied at uh, seven gallons a ton in the testing that we did. And now you can see that we're getting almost a 20% increase in ice melt capacity. Uh, again, that would allow you to reduce your application rate, um, you know, uh, almost uh, 20%. Um, so the savings there, not only have you paid for this de-icer now, but you are money ahead and uh, absolutely lower chloride emissions to your environment. And then uh, this is a GeoMelt 55. It's a beet juice product. Um, this product you can see here is a 27% increase in performance. And then uh, we're going to look at this uh, uh, product here. It's a uh, it, uh, organic based uh, de-icer. And if you take that product and mix it 50-50 with brine uh, at seven gallons a ton, that uh, liquid de-icer now is melting almost 50% more ice than the uh, brine or uh, untreated rock salt. So a huge uh, spike in performance. And then if you apply that same liquid de-icer, again, that's 50-50 uh, brine in, uh, in the organic de-icer. Uh, now look at the performance. I mean, the performance is just, you know, much, much higher. Again, that's allowing us to reduce our application rate. So if you get a 64% increase in ice melt capacity, that means now that you can back your application rate down 39%. And so I don't you know, really care what size of agency you have. You may have a, a real small agency, or maybe you're you know, working for a, a state DOT. It doesn't matter. 39% less salt is a huge, huge, not only savings in material costs, but a huge reduction in your chloride emissions into your local environment. So if uh, we looked at, you know, 39% reduction on 1.1 million tons, uh, that means the, you could reduce uh, that 1.1 million tons uh, by 429,000 tons, uh, which would be 17,160 semi-loads of rock salt. So this is what I mean by boost and reduce. It's all based on the performance of your uh, rock salt. And uh, as I said earlier, the better it works, the less of it you need. So what we're advocating here is that it, it's really um, something that you need to do uh, besides all of the other things that you've already done, you need to be looking at what liquid de-icer products are you using and how are they performing uh, versus just brine alone. Okay, so uh, getting into a little bit more specifics about organics. Um, why do they work so much better? Well, it's because they contain sugar. And um, sugar, as most of you know, uh, and we know, uh, sugar doesn't melt anything. But if you put the sugar with a chloride, all of a sudden what's happening is that sugar is enhancing that chloride's ability to melt ice and snow. So if we, as we looked, uh, you know, at the 32% calcium chloride earlier, uh, had a really nice, uh, you know, uptick in performance. But if you add sugar to that calcium chloride, that number would be much, much higher. And so um, the sugar uh, is a performance enhancement. Um, I'm going to real quickly go through 10 uh, uh, different uh, things that sugar does to uh, rock salt and brine. So first off, uh, sugar suppresses the freeze point of rock salt and brine. And we use the analogy of Coke versus Diet Coke. Coke has sugar. Uh, Diet Coke does not have sugar. You put them in a freezer, you're going to uh, find out very quickly that the Coke doesn't freeze as quickly as the Diet Coke. Um, so um, you're going to see that, you know, with your own eyes, um, the Diet Coke that doesn't have any sugar in it, it's going to freeze up much quicker than the Coke. Uh, number two, sugar lowers the effective working temperature of rock salt and brine. So if you uh, lower the freeze point, well, uh, guess what? You're lowering the effective working temperature 
of the uh, uh, de-icer as well. Number three, sugar increases ice melt capacity as we saw uh, through the test that I just showed you. Sugar reduces the corrosion value of rock salt and brine. Um, and I say mitigates the bad reputation of calcium chloride. If you've ever used calcium chloride, you know that it's you know very, very corrosive. And uh, just simply by adding uh, sugar to it, uh, you can take its uh, calcium chloride's uh, corrosion value of, of 121. Uh, it's possible to take it all the way down to, you know, as low as 14.8 on that same corrosion scale, just simply by adding sugar to it. Uh, number five, sugar acts as a cryoprotectant. Uh, cryoprotectants inhibit the formation of ice crystals. So the other thing that you would discover if you put a bottle of Coke and a bottle of Diet Coke in your freezer is not only is the Coke not going to freeze as quickly as the Diet Coke, but you're also going to notice that it never really gets rock hard uh, like the Diet Coke will. It will be more slushy uh, for a very long period of time before it gets uh, rock hard. Um, so it's that's because the sugar in the Coke is inhibiting the formation of ice crystals. And what more could we ask for in a de-icer uh, than to inhibit the formation of ice crystals? Uh, number six, cryoprotectants also slow down the rate of refreeze. Um, again, if you've used calcium chloride in the past, uh, it has a notorious reputation of uh, refreezing very quickly. And actually, uh, it refreezes very quickly because it's a very powerful ice melter. Uh, what's happening is it's melting so much ice at such a rapid, rapid uh, pace uh, that it's diluting itself out. And once it reaches that certain dilution point uh, where the uh, eutectic freeze point is higher than you know, 32, then it starts to freeze. Um, and we look at this as a very important uh, deal because if you think about it, we're applying these liquid de-icers or, or all de-icers to uh, roadways that are designed with a crown. So we're trying to you know, we put the salt uh, on the top of the crown usually, and uh, we're wanting that to, you know, run off of the crown and uh, crown of the road and melt. Um, and if it's refreezing very quickly, um, you're not going to get, you know, very good performance. But if we can slow that refreeze down substantially, well, then you're going to get a lot more, uh, you know, uh, time for that liquid de-icer to do its, you know, work on that uh, crowned roadway. Number seven, sugar strengthens and extends the anti-bonding characteristics of rock salt and brine. And uh, similarly, uh, number eight, sugar strengthens and extends the residual effect of rock salt and brine. And I have here a, a note, um, you know, anti-icing without anti-icing. And what I mean by that is that if you're applying a uh, de-icer to your rock salt that has a lot of sugar in it. Well, uh, what you're going to find out is the you're going to have a residual effect from that rock salt, and um, a lot of uh, our customers uh, have you know given their own personal testimony that you know they're getting these anti-icing benefits. Uh, because they treat 100% of their rock salt and that residual that's left out there on the roadway uh, is uh, active at the next snow event. So again, just uh, another point about having a, a lot of uh, using a product that's got a lot of sugar in it. Uh, number nine, sugar acts as a tachyfier, uh, reducing bounce and scatter loss far more than pre-wetting agents containing a little or no sugar whatsoever. And one of the questions that you know, I ask uh, often is that if you're gonna go to the trouble of wetting your rock salt, uh, doesn't it make a lot of more sense to use a heavier, stickier de-icer than just say um, uh, calcium chloride or brine alone? Uh, yeah, it makes all of the sense in the world. If you're gonna go to the trouble of wetting your salt, 
uh, use a, a, a high performance de-icer that's got a lot of sugar in it. And, um, and, and that will also be a product that is very heavy and very sticky. And then number 10, uh, dark sugar uh, increases the ability of rock salt and brine to absorb solar radiation. And uh, uh, we've done testing on this and it is really a big deal. Um, obviously the darker your salt is, uh, the more uh, solar radiation it's going to absorb. And if it's absorbing that radiation or heat, it's also going to emit that same uh, uh, heat uh, back into the, um, you know, the surface. So just by darkening your salt, you can pick up about five and a half degrees uh, over untreated rock salt or even brine or calcium chloride treated rock salt, the colors are the same. So darken the salt, uh, get a little extra help uh, from the uh, sun. Um, and by the way, even on a cloudy day, uh, we're told that uh, about 50% of that radiation still penetrates the cloud cover. And uh, here's a test we did on liquids. Um, after one hour, the darker liquid, uh, the organic based uh, product uh, was 10.2 degrees warmer than the clear uh, de-icer. Um, okay, so moving on here, we just have a few minutes here. I wanna point this uh, out and by using a, you know, a, a picture, I think it'll help you get a, a little better idea. Um, question here is, are you concerned about the cost of using high performance organic uh, de-icers? And I say, don't be, and this is the reason why. So let's take a salt dome here. And let's say that salt dome uh, holds a thousand tons of rock salt. Um, let's say that rock salt $75 a ton. That may not be what you're paying this year, but I bet some time in the past you've paid $75 a ton. So that means 1,000 tons is costing your agency $75,000. Now, if you were to buy a liquid, high performance liquid uh, organic based de-icer, um, look at the cost. The, the cost to treat that 1,000 tons of rock salt is one-tenth of the amount of money that you're paying for that rock salt. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to, uh, you know, get you to see that the price of that liquid de-icer is not a big deal. Uh, in fact, uh, I think it's almost completely irrelevant. Um, the savings that you're going to get, you know, remember, we're talking about a, potentially a 39% increase, or excuse me, 64, 65% increase in performance, allowing you to back your application rate down 39%. Uh, so the amount of money that you're investing in uh, that high performance liquid de-icer is just a very, very small amount of money compared to the amount of money that you're going to save uh, because your rock salt is performing so much better now. So um, here's another slide that I use in our presentations. And, um, you know, there, I'm speaking about my product right now. Um, every $1 that you invest in that product because of its performance is going to save you about $4 in rock salt. That is a 400% return on investment. And um, so again, the amount of money that you're spending on your liquid de-icer is almost completely uh, irrelevant. It, it's all about the performance of your rock salt. And so, you know, I'm talking here about saving money, but you also have to realize that in the same context, we're talking about reducing chloride emissions. So if you're saving 39% on cost, um, you're saving that much in chloride emissions into the environment. They go hand in hand uh, here. So uh, with that, um, I've completed my presentation exactly 8.30 um, a.m. in the morning here. And uh, so if you have questions, uh, please uh, text those to me. I don't have any uh, messages right now, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, if and if, if folks had any questions, you can throw them in the chat. Or if you raise your hand, I can also turn your mic on. 
Um, yeah. If you would like to just ask Denver any questions directly. Yeah, Jennifer, while we're waiting on uh, questions um, and have a couple minutes here to answer questions, um, you know, one of the things that I say uh, quite often is, uh, especially this time of year, uh, my customers uh, a lot of, uh, just send me a, you know, an email and say, hey, Denver, we need a load of beet heat. Uh, that's the name of our product. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and um, so uh, my point is that they're not contacting me asking about the price. Uh, they're contacting me to get a load of the high performance liquid deicer uh, because they know that it's saving them money and it's saving them chloride emissions. Uh, the cost of it is kind of a secondary you know, concern. Uh, they just need the product that's going to allow them to save that kind of money and reduce their chloride emissions by that much. Um, so it's, we got a question here, Denver. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to let Mike. Okay, let's see. Okay, so you can, I think at this point, you can unmute yourself, Mike, and it should allow you to talk. We should be able to hear you now, Mike. You want to ask your question? Okay, I'm sorry, he typed it in. So can the high performance liquid deicer be applied to um, the, his regular uh, sodium chloride rock salt piles and where do you purchase it? Yep, so, um, you know, my phone number's on the screen, my email's on the screen. You can talk to me about our product. Uh, there are other products out there as well, um, as I covered earlier. But um, yes, it, it can be applied directly to your rock salt in a stockpile. And 12 years ago, we had a lot of agencies that were doing that. And uh, for our product, we recommend uh, five gallons a ton. Um, so, you know, you take the cost and, you know, five gallons, you can easily, you know, calculate what it's going to increase your uh, salt, uh, you know, percentage cost wise. But then again, like I said, the, you're going to be able to back your application rate down. If you're only using brine right now, you're going to be able to back it, your application rate down 39%. And um, so contact me if you'd like information on our product and I can, uh, you know, go over with you. Uh, we happen to have uh, what's called a, a user's guide uh, that we send out to uh, all of our customers and prospective customers. And uh, we all in that guide, we have uh, temperature driven uh, application rates so that you can take a look at, you know, what those uh, application rates are. Um, I would, might also say, uh, Jennifer, that we had an agency last year uh, that um, uh, called me up. I'd never talked to the gentleman before. Um, I'd sent him, you know, literature and so forth, but never talked to him. And he called me up and, and uh, I'll give you the abbreviated version of this. Um, he basically said they had a city council meeting uh, the, the night before. And the city council members told him they were not giving him any money to buy rock salt for this coming winter season. And, um, and it wasn't a money issue that uh, made him decide not to give the public works uh, any money for salt. It was because they wanted their public works to figure out how to um, uh, get by with the 3,000 tons that they had uh, in their salt barn, uh, typically they used uh, five to 6,000 tons. And so basically they just kind of threw the gauntlet down and said, listen, we want to reduce our chloride emissions in this city. And so we're not going to give you any money to buy more rock salt. And um, I'd have to tell you that the, there was a, I could, you know, sense uh, some panic uh, in his voice as he's, uh, you know, telling me his dilemma here. And um, we talked for about an hour on the phone, but at the end of that conversation, I told him this is going to end up being a really, really good story. Uh, you hang with me here. Let's go through this together. 
And uh, you're going to discover that you can reduce your application rate by 40%. And uh, so about halfway through the season, he uh, sent me an email or a, a text message. And he said, Denver, I just uh, sent you an email. I want you to take a look at the slides that are attached to this email. And uh, so I got on and pulled the slides up. And basically um, what it was, was they were having another city council member meeting. And uh, this time they were going to the city council meeting to show them how they reduce their salt application rate by 40%. And not only did they you know, uh, accomplish that, but their service level was actually better than what they were doing before. And uh, by the way, what they were doing before was they were applying brine to, um, you know, rock salt. So just simple brine treated rock salt. Uh, they made the conversion over. And uh, I, I looked for that agency to maybe get up to possibly 50% reduction. Uh, in their second year. Um, and uh, so really, really good things happen uh, when agencies uh, really take a strong look at these high performance uh, liquid de-icers. Awesome. I think Mike said he would uh, try and give you a call afterwards and then okay. talk through some things. Sure. Um, so unless we have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. And I want to thank Denver again for his presentation and for uh, their support of our uh, winter de-icing workshops. I think going all back almost to the beginning of our of our workshops over the last 10-ish 10, yeah. uh, 10 yeah. years. I think uh, I was and, there. And, yeah. Yep. Denver has always been a, a great uh, sponsor and contributor of information and been happy to have him uh, participate in these uh, winter technical briefs. So yeah, please do reach out to Denver if you have uh, specific questions about the, the types of products that he was talking about. Um, and uh, thank you, Denver, and I hope you have a, a great holiday season. Uh, same to you, Jennifer. Thanks for the invite. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And again, you can uh, go to saltsmart.org um, to see the uh, different uh, webinars that we have posted there. We'll have this one up in just a couple of days uh, posted to, to the website. And again, all kinds of resources there. So Thank you again for your time this morning and uh, wish everybody a safe and healthy, happy uh, holiday season. Thank you.